Hey, Board Game Maniacs. Maniac Rob here, and as promised, I am at the Adepticon 2018. And as you can see, it is a packed house. And this is only the start at 10 a.m. What I plan on doing is I'm going to go around to different vendors. I'm going to do some recording, some interviews, and see what's going on here. So stand by for that. I hope you enjoy the footage. This is one of the convention halls where they're going to be hosting the tournaments. As you can see, people are all just starting to come in and get everything set up. What it looks like here is it is X-Wing and there may be other things too as well. I'll walk around, take a peek and see what's going on. One of the other tournaments that they're having at this year's Adepticon is Shadespire. If anybody's familiar with this, this here is, it is a board game, but it uses really, really detailed miniatures like you use in like Warhammer, Age of Sigmar and so forth, because it is part of the Age of Sigmar world that you're seeing right here. This is the competition Thursday, 22nd of March, you see the times too as well. I'm hoping we get some shots of the uh, players in action. We are at another one of the convention halls, and this convention hall is Warhammer 40K. They're all getting set up for the tournament for it. There's many tournaments going on this weekend here at Adepticon. And as you can see there, it's packed already. Now the tournaments, I think they do start at 10 a.m. Everybody's starting to set up as you can see here. Lots and lots of people. Hopefully I'll be able to get some uh, shots in to see how everything is going with everybody. Maybe interview a couple of the uh, combatants. We'll see how it goes. You can see there's a timer that is projected onto the ceiling or the wall. And what that is, is for the tournament, everybody get a good indication of how long they have for the battle and if they can win victory before the time is out at the Star Wars Legion booth. This is the main reason why I came to Adepticon this year. And you can see there's a crowd gathering around with all of the games and everybody's playing them. It looks really cool. I'm going to try to get in, get a couple of tight shots, see if I can interview somebody here. So hang on and wish me luck. Okay, board game maniacs. What we have here is if you can see right here, and you probably recognize this face, <laughs> the whole reason why I came to Adepticon in 2018 was to interview this man and talk about this phenomenal game that is just released on the 22nd. It was the 22nd it was released, right? Yeah, it just came out. Yeah, so again, so excited. You know I'm gonna be playing this on the channel. So give me the nitty gritty about the game, but the development, how long did it take to develop this? Uh, so I was working on this game for a little over a year uh, from kind of the initial like, hey, we wanna do uh, a Star Wars miniatures game that's more hobby focused, that's more, uh, you know, something that can be played on, on realistic terrain that people made themselves or that they have at their friendly local gaming store. Um, so I'd say maybe, maybe about 14, 15 months from initial vision concepting to, uh, to the time that I had the core set and the first couple units developed. Of course, uh, after that, we've been we've been just going full steam ahead. So we've got a whole bunch of stuff in the pipeline coming up that we've already uh, gold mastered, and, and it's just ready and waiting to uh, to come out. So uh, we're we're going to see a lot of Legion for for the next uh, significant amount of time. Uh, I'm so excited. So if anybody don't know who this is, but you know about Star Wars Legion, that there's something wrong with you. <laughs> Properly introduce yourself, please. Uh, hey, I'm Alex Davey. I'm the uh, designer of Star Wars Legion. So I'm here for uh, launch. You know, launch week. It's super exciting. A lot of people are here uh, buying Legion, putting it together. Uh, the great folks at Adepticon are running a build and play tournament that they did yesterday. They're doing it again today. There's a team tournament tomorrow. So people are already getting those models on the table and I couldn't be happier. Awesome. So I got a really serious question to ask you actually. Um, are you the dark side? Well, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to plead the fifth on that one. Oh, oh. <laughs> there you got it. So, you know, board game maniacs, this is the man that you can thank for this incredible game. Um, so during the development phases and everything, when you created the miniatures, like what persuaded you or what made you want to go with the, the size of the miniatures as opposed to the other games that Fantasy Flight has put out? Yeah, well, we wanted to do something that was going to have a little bit more detail, be a little bit more approachable for people to paint. Uh, we just wanted to, we wanted the Stormtroopers to feel like they were uh, wearing that kind of bulky armor. And uh, mostly it was an aesthetic choice just to 
to give people uh, these really large and dynamic uh, figures. We went with a slightly larger base so that the poses could be spread out a little bit, the legs can have wider stances, have a little more variety in the poses. Mostly we're just trying to make the coolest looking uh, plastic models that we can so that uh, miniatures painters can uh, really dig in and, and have a lot of fun with them. Uh, I have to say, I, I looked at the, uh, the Stormtroopers, the miniatures, I was like, oh, this is awesome. Looked at the Rebels, they were awesome. Looked at the speeder bikes, I just was getting more excited. And then my jaw just dropped and I started drooling when I seen the ATST. Oh, isn't it beauty? It's so huge, too. It's almost, it's almost perfectly to scale as, in terms of how large it would actually be with the, uh, with the um, uh, miniatures. It's a little bit smaller than that, just for practicality's sake. But it's a jaw-dropping model and it's a lot of fun on the tabletop. Now, just another uh, little question. You don't have to yeah. answer this if you can't. All right. But uh, is there any thoughts of maybe an at, -AT coming out for the game in the future? That I can't answer. I'm no, sorry. Oh, no. Would be cool, though. <laughs> Even, uh, like, the scum, too, as well, like Boba oh, Fett sure. and everything like that. Before. No, you can't really give any secrets away. Well, or who anything. doesn't love Boba Fett? Come That's on. That's right. I mean... Oh, it's, again, thank you very much. I know you're a very busy man for this. I won't keep it too long with this interview, but just remember, Board Game Maniacs, right here, Alex, he's a maniac himself. It's true. You've got me pegged. <laughs> That's what we do. We're Board Game Maniacs, <laughs> Tabletop Maniacs. So thank you very much, sir. A handshake Yeah, too. pleasure. I'm glad you're excited about the game. I hope you will be enjoying it for a long time to come. Oh, I certainly will, and so will all the viewers. Thank you very much. Cheers. We have John here. He is from Warlord Games. Hi, Robert. Hi, gang. So you can see, you've seen a lot of our games that we played on our channel from Warlord Games, like Project Z, Test of Honor, Bolt Action. We're going to be playing, constantly playing more and more. So thank you for taking the time. I know you're busy. Anytime, your Robert. So I love doing this busy. stuff. It's fun. This is the fun part of the hobby. I love this stuff. <laughs> so how long have you been with Warlord Games, John? Off and on for about... Uh, five years but uh full-time last year so you uh, do you play any of the warlord games yep all what of is, them what is your favorite game from warlord games well bolt action is my you know, my bread and butter i've always loved that I had a great time doing doing a lot of the, the uh play testing and stuff like that so bolt action is my go-to if i have some time however lately test of honor has been creeping in there and blood red skies is a hoot and i really love blood red skies so that's probably Blood Red Skies, but Bolt Action is my go-to. And then you know, I've always got the Hail Caesar and the Pike and Shot and the and the and the uh, Blood and Plunder. I mean, the Blood and Plunder. That's the other game. Never <laughs> uh, Black Powder with uh, uh, Zulus. Uh, that's you know, I, you gotta love that one. And we've got some new ones coming out that I think you and your fans are gonna really, really like. Uh, we've got Cruel Seas coming out later on in the fall, which is a uh, small boat actions like. PT boats and e-boats, stuff like that, that's going to come out in the fall. And we're very excited to start talking about Strontium Dog in 2000 AD. Uh, it's a, uh, we just started talking about that one. Uh, Andy Chambers and Gav Thorpe are writing the rules for that one as we speak. And it's a, uh, all the stuff from 2000 AD, if you're a big fan of the comic book, you know, Judge Dredd, Slain, Strontium Dog, uh, ABC Warriors, uh, uh, Rogue Trooper. We're going to have this base game system that's going to be a lot like the comic. I got a chance to play it when I was over in England last week, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's story based, uh, all the main characters are there. Right now, we're doing Strontium Dog. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. And that's going to be like the basis for it's going to be like, like uh, a universal you can plug in whatever you guys got as we come, um, come out. So, Strontium Dog is the first one. And you can play a protagonist, like one of the bad guys there, or, or Alpha, Johnny Alpha. And you go through and do missions, and they change, and there's uh, uh, some chicanery that goes on. And uh, it's, it's a, it's a, the models look great, but you'll see that probably in the fall. That sounds incredible. You heard it here first with Robert Negret, gang. So. <laughs> so another question for you as well. You said that your bolt action is pretty much your bread and butter that you yeah. love. So what do you play when you play bolt action? I have Germans, Poles, American, Airborne, British, British Airborne, uh, 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 French, Russian, and uh, I play a lot of the Poles. Poles are my go-to and I like to play them, uh, so I have a good time with those. And uh, always Germans. Yeah, it, it's a bolt action. People have really uh, 
perked up and watch the, the videos on our channel for Bolt Action for sure. And we're gonna be putting a lot more onto it. So is there anything new that you could say that's coming out for Bolt Action? Anything well, kind of That's a great special? question, Robert, yeah. Uh, we got some stuff cut out for Bolt Action and for K47 this summer. Uh, just quick, K47, I'll come back to Bolt Action, I promise. Uh, K47 will come out with a new book called Defiance. And that's gonna be the Italians, both Axis and Allied. So they're gonna have different kind of models for those. And Defiance will bring K47 to Bolt Action 2. So it'll be the same game, but with lasers. Pew pew, you know, so, and walkers. But for Bolt Action, this uh, summer, fall, look for our new desert models. We're coming out with a, a, a we're, we're looking around 50 point, a $50 price point box set of some uh, desert rats and some African core guys. Excellent. Kind of like our Gates of Antares Cara 9 set. A quick starter set, rule books in there. <coughs> Excuse me. And then all the deserts coming out. So all the stuff for the desert war fight, uh, the Italians, all that crazy vehicles we had out there. So, so the big thing and the big push coming out for bolt action soon that I can talk about is the desert. So look for that stuff uh, fall, uh, early, uh, late, late summer, early fall. That is awesome. Um, a lot of people have asked me, see if you can find anything out about bolt action when you go to the uh, to sure. Adepticon. Sure. So this is the man I'm talking yep. to. And yep. I can tell that he fits right in with board game maniacs because he's <laughs> a board game maniac. Oh yeah, Tabletop board games maniac. are great, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, another question, I'm not going to keep you too much on because no, I know you're fine, really Robert. busy. But uh, can you touch upon the, uh, the, the Blood Red Skies oh, game? Oh yeah, fantastic stuff. Blood Red Skies, the boat finally came in. It was literally a slow boat from China, and we finally got to the port. They're gonna be delivered and shipping out uh, probably Easter time frame. Right now we've got Russians, uh, Yaks, Zeros, P-51s, uh, ME-109s, and Spitfires. That's the first round, and that's all Battle of the Britain. It's all coming out now, get your copies you can. The next round is gonna be probably P-47s, a JU-88s, maybe a Maki, uh, an Italian job. Uh, not the movie, a airplane. And then we're gonna have also probably some, uh, maybe a Val or a Kate. Uh, at Salute this year, the guys over in England, a while ago, found online the USS Hornet in 200 scale. That boat is four feet long, okay? So at Salute, they're gonna have a display of the attack on the USS Hornet in the Coral Sea. So you'll see zeros and wildcats and all kinds of crazy stuff like that going on. So Pacific is what we're gonna to lean to next probably. P-38s, uh, Mosquito, and we'll have the Mosquito for, uh, uh, for Europe. So we're not gonna just stop with the five uh, factions we have now. There's gonna be a lot more stuff, Italians and stuff like that. So watch the site, uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And if you're not doing anything around 18th, 19th, and 20th of uh, May, shameless plug, shameless plug, come on down to Oklahoma City, that's where I'm at. We're gonna have Warlord Games Con. Warlord Games Con, it's our fifth annual. We're gonna have 9,000 square feet of fun. It's like the old conventions where you just show up. We've got all the boards covered with miniatures and terrain. You can go play Bolt, Axe and Hail, Caesar, Pike and Shot, Black Pot, or whatever you wanna learn how to play. Steve Morgan, who wrote the rules for Pike and Shot, will be there. And we're gonna have four tables that are gonna be interactive like we used to do in the old days. It's gonna be a Bolt, it's gonna be Guadalcanal. It's gonna be Bolt Action, Japanese, Tac and Americans. Then we're gonna do another smaller table. We're, we're working on a new system or a new idea called Raiders Attack. And what that is, is in bolt action, instead of the whole squad getting a dice, each guy gets a dice. So it's a trill schoomer scheme. It will be a Japanese village people are fighting on, so that'll interact with the other game. Meanwhile, two more boards are being fought over. Blood Red Skies, here comes the Bettys and the Zeros trying to attack Henderson Field, so that'll be going on, interacting with those two boards. And then the fourth board will be Cruel Seas. The Japanese are trying to send some ammo troops, to, I mean, uh, some assault ships down full of troops and the PT boats are gonna stop them. So all four of those games will work together into one, and that'll be at Warlord GamesCon in May, 18, 19, and 20th. That sounds incredible, I have to say. That was gonna be my next question, but you kind of answered it, <laughs> because um, with Blood Red Skies, I, I can see it so closely being able to be intermingled with oh, yeah. both action. Yep, yep. And, uh, we'll, we'll later on, we'll get attack craft, you know, ground attack craft, we're working on that. Oh, you asked about more stuff for Blood Red, for Bolt Action too, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> How about this? 
Korea. We're going to be doing a Korea supplement. We're working on it right now. It should come out uh, probably first of the year next year. It's going to be the whole, whole war from 50 to 53. We're going to have army lists for all the major United Nations combatants, uh, terrain, night fighting, jet attacks, bugles. We might have a guy with a dress, call him Clunker. I don't know. We'll see. Who knows? There'll be mass units. There'll be jets. There'll be kind of uh, different scenarios in there of the major combatants. Plus, we're going to have what if scenarios like uh, MiG crashes in the middle of no man's land and it's got a Russian pilot. Who gets to it first? Propaganda coup. We might have some Hollywood things like Bridges of Toko Ri, Pork Chop Hill. But that's a uh, supplement I'm actually working on. We have to have it done by this summer and then we'll put it over to Osprey. So it'll be published next year. Wow. I'm, I'm lost I'm for words right now. Like, <laughs> oh. Watch over that one too. And then there's okay. some other stuff we're working on, but I can't tell you about that. However, Blood Red Skies will tie in really, really well with your uh, uh, bolt action stuff. That's what I've been, uh, that's what I was thinking. And yep. just, I watch some of like just the tutorials online that right. you guys have put out. And I'm thinking how well this is going to just interlace and intermingle with bolt action yep. and yep. create such more of an epic battle than what it already is when you play it. Yep. Now, one more question. I promise I will leave you alone after this. <laughs> now, Recently on, on our channel, Board Game Manics, we started doing some Test of Honor games. Yes. Uh, we released a full video series from start to finish, as in uh, painting the miniatures, assembling and painting the, uh, the towns from Swiss uh, Precision, up to building an entire battle board Excellent. for it from start to finish, and then also playing the game. Yeah. Starting with the first scenario. Right. So, is there anything that you could tell me about uh, Test of Honor now? The reason why I'm asking this is because I fell instantaneously in love with Test of Honor. Sure. Everything You're... about it, it just it makes the gameplay and the mechanics flow so what, smoothly. But uh, 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 Test of Honor is such a sake and sushi game. It, it is just fantastic. It's got the hook. It's got the role-playing hook. It's so easy to expand. We've even expanded it into our pike and shot. You can buy a whole samurai army now and use pike and shot rules. So your little samurai can run through the rampants and then become a, in charge almost a shogun. And you can do those large scale battles. But for Test of Honor itself, the uh, uh, monks of Sohi just came out last week. They just pressed them. I couldn't bring any here, otherwise I would have had some. But they're getting shipped out now. That's our new uh, campaign pack, an attack on the, the, uh, the monk's temple. You can look for something new for Test of Honor every quarter. Like next quarter, it's gonna, I think, gonna be those bloody peasants or something, and there's gonna be a bunch of peasants and stuff, and uh, there'll be, I don't know, some bad guys, maybe brigands or something attacking, and maybe seven guys might come around and help them help, you know, stop those attacks. Uh, there's a lot of stuff coming up for Test of Honor. Uh, they just released a huge, beautiful temple from Sarissa. So Test of Honor is a great game. It's a lot of fun. We have a great time playing it. So there'll be a lot more stuff coming. And I think there's a winner one. Um, Defend the village, I think, or something. So, but, but yeah, watch for these major combat. The new one now is Monks of Sohi. Excellent. Thank you again very much, John, for taking the time out of your busy schedule Thanks, to sit through an interview for Board Game Maniacs. I appreciate sure. it. I'm looking forward to everything you said coming up in the future. Yep. And so is everybody here at Board Game Maniacs. Yeah. Good so, job. One more question for you, sure. and that is Are you a maniac? I'm a maniac. <laughs> We have Brian with us right now, and he is involved with Team Yankee and Flames of War. So, Brian, can you tell us a little bit about, uh, first off, Flames of War, what is it, and so forth? I already know what it is, sorry to interrupt you, and a lot of our viewers know what it is, but we just want to hear it from the man himself. Okay, so, Flames of War is the Hollywoodized version of a war game for World War II, and Team Yankee is the hypothetical Cold War Gone Hot scenario, and it's more of a war game and less of a historical war game because it does have historical elements it's based in history but it's got a bit of flavor that makes it a little more fun than balanced so uh what size is uh the scale of the game i should say so it's 15 millimeter uh one 100 scale and it's based in like world war ii side you said roughly so flames of war is world war ii yep. and then team yankee is like 1985 cold war gone hot uh, we also have Vietnam, which everyone knows is like the 70s, and so that's way down over there. But uh, Go ahead, sorry. We also have a World War I game and an uh, Arab-Israeli war game, and all of them use basically the same rule set. So if you know one, you can learn the others. 
Excellent. So you can the rules are pretty much they mash together so that you're yes. not going to be confused from one game to another. There's slight differences, but you can pick them up pretty easy as you go. Um, how long has Flames of War been around? That's a good question. I don't really know. It's been about 15 years from what I've been told. I'm not the guy who'd be able to answer that question. So it's been a long time. Yes. And Team Yankee, that's uh, more fairly new? Came out about two years ago. Now, have you, obviously, what is your game that you would like to play the most between, like, the teams of uh, Flames of War and Team Yankee? Personally, my favorite game to play is Flames of War, because I... Flames of War is more my time period that I'm interested in, though I have played Team Yankee. I have, I've got uh, an East German Army, an American Army, actually two American armies, and I'm looking forward to building the French when the NATO book comes out in about a month and a half. Um, speaking of like uh, what types you can get, like the, the French and that, can you kind of touch upon that about, you know, what factions, what type of armies that you can get for Flames of War? Because a lot of people are definitely uh, probably going to be interested, okay, I want to play Germans or I want to play Americans or so forth. So in Team Yankee, we've got right now West Germans, East Germans, British, Americans, Russians, and we're coming out with a book that's going to have French, uh, Dutch, Canadians, and I don't remember what the other country that's in it because it's not uh, been printed yet. But there's a lot of cool stuff coming out for that. And then also in Flames of War, you've got basically every country that participated in the conflict. Like you can even play Brazil. You know, there's Greeks, Brazilians, Italians, uh, Germans, Russians, Finns, Romanians, Hungarians, the list goes on. Well, it, uh, again, I've watched a couple of YouTube videos on the Flames of War, and it looks like it can be such a huge, epic battle. Now, talking about battle-wise, like, what is the surface size that you roughly play it on? So the majority of Team Yankee games, or mid-war games uh, for Flames of War, are played at 100 points, but you can play really anything between 50 and 100. Uh, and that's generally like a reinforced company size. So for you know a tank company, it'd be uh, you know, 15 tanks, some support vehicles, and maybe a platoon or two of infantry and aircraft. Uh, in Team Yankee, it'd be about the same thing, depending on what you build. In Team Yankee, there's such a variety of like small vehicles, big vehicles, things with big guns, things with small guns, infantry, missiles, uh, artillery pieces, all that fun stuff. And Team Yankee, Team Yankee and Flames of War both have that. So there's no real limit to the possibilities of what you can come up with. So it's really just your personal preference. It's your hobby. Also, I notice onto your, uh, I'm just showing a quick shot of uh, the products that you have there. Now, you can get terrain for it. You sell terrain for Team Yankee and also for Flames of War? Yes, indeed. We, Battlefront, also own a company called Gale Force 9. So we work together to make terrain and hobby tools, scenics, and all that fun stuff to be kind of like the one-stop shop for the hobby. You know, we've got, you know, sculpting tools. We've got hobby knives. We've got glue. We've got basing materials like flock, etc. And all of our terrain comes pre-painted and no assembly required. And for the price point, you can't really beat it because you can get a two-story building with, that's got a removable upper floor, removable roof that's fully painted for 25 bucks. Wow, that's so really good. I personally, before I even worked here, I couldn't find terrain that was that good of a deal. And even now, I can't find anything. Even now that I'm on the inside of the industry, I can't find anything for that kind of price. Yeah, like the, I have to comment onto the detail of your your miniatures and the tanks and everything, they're phenomenal. Like the, for that small of a scale and getting that much detail is very, very impressive. We got to plan like, you know, a year or so ahead to make sure that everything falls into place. The kits can come out at the same time as the book and we don't have any, you know, issues with, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, quality control or anything like that. Um, the gentleman uh, over there, uh, John Paul Brzezagati, John Matthews, and Pete Simonovich, they're the guys who kind of run the company. They'd have the answers to those questions. Do you paint your own miniatures? I do, mostly. Uh, sometimes if I want something painted really nice, I have a friend of mine that paints them for me. Um, but uh, for the most part, I've painted my 21st Panzer, uh, looted Panzers, looted Stugs. I've got a Hermann Goering Panzer division. Uh, I've got Hungarians, uh, cavalry, infantry, tanks. I have a Soviet armor. I've got uh, my, my East Germans I painted. I did not paint my mid-war Germans uh, because I wanted them to be a, a different style that I could not do myself. I'm terrible at painting by hand. I can do an airbrush pretty well. So for anybody starting out and wanting to start playing Flames of War, or even Team Yankee, uh, can you give them any recommendations of, do you, like, do you have a core box that they should start off with? 
or anything that will you know help them get into it quickly so first and foremost you got to think what country you like you know if you happen to have a, a background your parents came from I don't know let's say we're talking World War II your parents came from Norway well there's a Norwegian army list that you could put together and it's available online or you know let's say that your family's Russian and you want to play Team Yankee Russians you know we have you'd start with the army box and the book for those we've all of our major countries we've got army boxes that are all plastic they come with a mini rule book they come with unit cards and then we've got a starter set that's $35 for both Team Yankee and Flames of War that comes with, uh, for Team Yankee, it's Russians and Americans and some two-dimensional terrain. And then same thing for uh, mid-war Flames of War, we got uh, Germans and British with some two-dimensional terrain, a mini rule book, dice, unit cards, all that fun stuff. Now, just one question is, anybody who wants to purchase this, where can they buy it at? What is your website that they can go to? So we have many retailers all over the US and you know Europe and other countries. I, I don't know where all of them are located, but we also have a website which is uh, www.flamesofwar.com. Bring you an interview from the famous game Ethereum. If you don't know what this game is, I definitely would suggest checking it out for sure by Anvilite Games. And uh, I played this uh, at Mini War Gaming. We did a test play, Luke and myself, and I, instantaneously fell in love with the mechanics and how this is played. We have a special guest right now, Brian, right here. That's me. So, Brian, i got a couple of questions for you, just yeah, so the Board sure. Game Maniacs, you know, they get to know what the game is, they can search it up. So first off, what is your website? Uh, www.anvil-eight, that's anvil8.com. Uh, Great. So, with this game, uh, uh, do you make, is this your, your primary game that you make up for the business? Yeah, we have, well, we have two games. We have uh, the, the miniatures board game, which is Ethereum, and we also have a fast action card game. Uh, but yeah, the, the Ethereum is the one that's kind of uh, grown most for us. Uh, this year, we're releasing our fourth expansion uh, in three years, so it, the game's growing pretty quickly. That's right, Board Game Manus, you heard it. Fourth expansion. Board Game Maniacs love expansions <laughs> for games for sure, yeah. Brian. So, a couple other questions here for you. Uh, um, what, what do you think with this game specifically? I know how, why it stands out between other games, but what do you think why this game would stand, does stand out? Yeah, uh, well, so Ethereum's got a couple things going on. So, it takes place in a virtual mindscape, a little bit like uh, Matrix or Tron or Ready Player One that's coming out quite soon, where people download their consciousness into this game. Uh, so, the idea is that the reality is malleable. Um, and uh, one of the ways that's represented in the game board is that um, the more of these pylons you control, the more resources you generate. And the more resources you generate, the more you can actually manipulate the reality as you're playing inside of it. So the game board actually moves as you're playing, which offers like two really cool things. Well, first is um, strategically, you can't think the way you would in a normal board game or miniatures game because models are actually, you know, the whole terrain is actually shifting around as you play. Uh, and two, in terms of replayability, you could never play the same game twice here. Even if you set the board up exactly the same for some reason, you're never actually going to play the same game twice. So that offers a lot of really cool stuff. Um, we also have a, a really, it's an I go, you go mechanism in the game itself. Um, and there's a really cool way in which you kind of calibrate your hand, basically. You program which units are going to activate in which order for a round. Uh, and it goes I go, you go. And after that, there's no conventional turn structure. Um, so the I go, you go never stops, even if you have, say, five units left and I only have three. Uh, the I go, you go continues, so what that represents is my processor is running a little bit more light because I'm only running three programs, so my guys are going to activate more frequently than yours. Um, which means that even if you're losing the game, there's no, there's, uh, it, we kind of call it the counter avalanche mechanism, where you can never get kind of swept away in a game. Even if you're losing technically, you've lost two units, say for example, the units that you have left are working harder. Uh, and are going to keep you into the game for the bitter end. So both players are completely engaged for the entire game. The, the game, uh, just a little uh, extra comment there where Brian said that the replayability, you could play this game a thousand times and you're going to play it differently every time. And 
I can say that is 100% true because, number one, you're playing against a different, com a different opponent. They think differently, so they're going to want to revolve the, uh, the tiles around differently. So one other question, too, as well. Now, this part of the mechanics really caught my attention is what happens if you step off of the tile? Uh, yeah. So in, in our world, the actual raw atmosphere of this virtual reality is toxic to the human mind. So this is why they build those pylons and hang the virtual reality off of it. If you get bumped off or step off voluntarily, God forbid, uh, you don't necessarily die immediately, but it's a little bit like um, like the hot lava type of thing. If you step off, things will go bad for you pretty pretty quickly. Um, and if you stay out there, you'll die for sure, yeah. Yeah, I learned that the hard way when I played, for sure. All right, well, Brian, uh, just another question there. Yeah. Um, just for all the viewers, shipping-wise, do you ship worldwide, like internationally? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. We've got... Um, some European distribution, and we also have uh, Canadian distribution now uh, through Golden that ships to stores up there. Uh, but then we also do direct shipments as well, if you prefer. Um, but yeah, so we are worldwide, absolutely. Awesome. Well, there you go, Board Game Maniacs. The game is Ethereum. They do have a card game, which I'm definitely going to check out next. If you are interested, please go to the uh, website, check them out, give a thumbs up, and if you have any questions, just uh, comment down below. And trust me, this game is definitely worth the purchase and the playability is incredible on this. And this is the second game that Brian has. So Brian, do you want to tell us a little bit about this one? Yeah, this is uh, Frontline No Comrades. It's a fast action, screw your neighbor card game for two to 10 players, bit of a party game. Uh, basically, you're a bunch of conscripts getting marched off to the front by the evil commissar. And every round, something horrible is gonna happen to you in the form of one of these incoming cards. And your job is then to stay alive by making sure that happens to your comrades instead of you. Um, you get to do all kinds of things in your turn by, like, for example, you can spread some misinformation or you can try and retreat. You can offer some of your comrades a glorious death, for example. It's real fast action stuff you play. Uh, and basically the idea is to, um, yeah, basically the idea is to stay alive and, and do horrible things to your friends. Roughly how long does it take to play the uh, game? 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, and like I said, 2 to 10 players. What we have people do is if they're playing with a 10-player crowd, that they start at a slightly lower health to make sure that people are dying quickly, basically. Oh, There's only so many uh, rations to go around, right? So if you got 10 people, everybody's a little hungry when they come into the combat. Wow, that's, that's crazy. Again, all the viewers at Board Game Man X know how much we love games of like, screw your neighbor and, you know, uh, cause some fun, trouble. Because yeah. we have, we, Board Game Man X, we're main acts when we play and we just try to cause trouble as much as possible. <laughs> Well, yeah. there you go, Board Game Annex. Hope you enjoyed this interview. Check out their website, check out their products, buy some of their products. Thank you. We have Corey here, and he has the game Enter Perdition. It is a Witchborn. Now, everybody who watches the channel knows how much I love Dungeons and & Dragons and RPG games and miniatures and so forth. So come, when I came over here first, I seen these maps, and that's what drew me in. And then I started talking to Corey here, and then he told me a little bit more about it, and. I'm hooked already, Board Game Maniacs. So this is Corey. So Corey, do you want to tell us about your company at first? Yeah. So the Witchborn is truly kind of that blend. I'm an old D&D player, right? I used to be the GM. I'd have to make up all the, all the adventures, all that kind of stuff. And the Witchborn is so I can play too. An app takes the place of a GM, but it's also got the tactics of a miniatures game. So we've got you know, tons of miniatures that come with the set, and you can actually sit and paint and get into that part of the hobby, and you can actually use the tactics. You're playing on this battle map, and so you're gonna be measuring, and combat becomes a much bigger part of the game. A lot of story, a lot of action, and it, it just keeps you going. And what's different from other miniatures games is a lot of miniatures games are sort of one-offs, right? It's like, I build an army, you build an army, and we kill each other. Um, that's not the story here. It's, it's, we build small war clans, starting with eight guys, and we're gonna play a series of adventures. That's where these maps come in. You can play them in any order, however you wanna play them whenever you want to play them. The events that are going to happen in that are totally random, so I can keep playing this adventure over and over again, and my guys are going to level up as I'm playing. So they're going to get better magic. They're going to get better.
better armor. They're going to create uh, their own. They're going to get better weapons. They're going to fight better. They're going to earn skills that help them improve. Maybe you want a blacksmith to uh, be able to make your own armor for your war clan. Maybe another guy levels up and you want him to be a better fighter, so he might take the gash skill to do more damage with his, uh, his uh, longsword. It's not like a D&D type thing where you level up and you're kind of I'm a fighter, so now I get more hit points, and I fight a little bit better. You control the development of all your characters. So it's very customizable per character. Yes, yes. I can flip you to the book here. And so, for example, if my character levels up, there's about 140 skills potentially that I can choose from. And then there's some that are war clan specific. If I'm playing dwarves, I'm the only one who can get these. If I'm elves, I'm the only one who can get these. And I might take sleep magic and be able to put people to sleep. I can uh, take guardian and now fight better. I can take uh, eldritch fire and throw little green orbs of magic uh, halfway across the battle map at people. So I understand you have two different core box sets. Do you want to explain a little bit about that? Yeah. So uh, there's two there's two sets, and the only difference between them is really how many players that they're set up for. So the two player set is called Enter Perdition, and that comes with everything that you need to play for two players. Plus the extra bonus is you get all the War Clan books. All the War Clan guides are in there, so um, a lot of players have their own. There's six different War Clan base War Clans, but a lot of players have their own miniatures, and they're like, "Well, I don't need the miniatures that come with the set. I'll bring my own orcs, or I'll bring my own uh, Norn barbarians," and so that's a way to save money. And then there's the six-player set that comes with all the miniatures and extra accessories like dice and condition markers to track health and that kind of stuff. And the apps for the game are all free, so they're all downloadable. Um, Is the, the apps set? for Android and iPhone? Yes, both Android and iPhone. Little difference on each of them. Um, the apps on the iPhone tend to be a little higher quality graphics because you're building for a couple different sizes of iPhone where Android, you kind of, it's all over the map, right? But I will tell you the Android folks are much easier to get your apps approved and they're, they're, much, they're much more fun to deal with. So, you know, there's, there's pros and cons for both. How long was this game in development for? Uh, it's still in development. It's it's uh, it's about ten years. About ten years. Yeah. And when was the official release date for this we, game? We launched it at Gen Con last year, so last August. We got our boxes in, packed them up, ran to Gen Con. I mean, the night before, we were we were going. So we've uh, started to get into some retailers. Uh, shout out to the folks in Calgary. We've got. Uh, biggest store in North America up there, Century Box, is uh, running it. And the first adopter down in uh, Fayetteville, Georgia. Um, Discover Games down there, so. With other uh, adventure uh, games that sometimes it can take like three, four hours to play one session. If you know the games, if you know the rules for this game, how long would it take to play roughly like a two-player game? Uh, so a two-player on Enter Perdition, the starting map is with experienced players is about an hour, hour and a half tops. Um, but that's not going into the rule book and, and checking out every little thing, you know? That's people who know it's probably gonna take you three, four hours your first time because there's gonna be a lot of rules you're not sure of. And so we've got a group that comes over every Friday night. We play and we play for 10 hours. We get in three, four games every each person and some of the other adventures uh, that are up on the wall take a little longer, um, a little more involved. This one's kind of an entry level, but 
two, three hours is, is pretty common for. That's great. So do you have a website that anybody can go to to check out the, more information about this game? Yes, uh, witchborn.com is definitely uh, the place to go. All one word, witchborn.com. Sean from Relic Blade. So this game has been out roughly about two years ago. It is uh, primarily a two-player game played on a surface of a two-by-two. Two, and it has minis, one of our yeah. favorite kind of games of all. So Sean, do you want to take, talk to me a little bit about Relic Blade, what it is and how it plays? Yeah, so Relic Blade's fantasy skirmish. Uh, it takes about a half hour to play a game and you only need four to six models per side. So it's very playable, uh, very fun and dynamic as you play. Uh, it's sort of like, uh, I don't know, you guys probably are familiar with games. It's a little bit like X-Wing mixed with Frostgrave or D&D &D versus Warhammer kind of a, it's very, it's a war game battle oriented with cool scenarios and everything uh, but but it has a lot of cool party dynamics a little bit like D D. so you gotta you gotta play all kinds of cool tactics and abilities as you as you figure out the best way to win um, and there's also upgrade cards as well so you specialize your characters lots of different ways and it's very dynamic and fun. so there's expansions you can get for the game as well yeah yeah there are uh, faction sets that have new character types and new monsters uh, new abilities and and those abilities sort of stack so there are some some class specific abilities so a fighter will have fighter upgrades for example but there are also neutral upgrades that anyone can take so as the game expands uh, it gets more and more options as, you, as it continues to grow. Um, you have you can get a core box for it. What does the core What does the core box have? I'm stumbling on yeah, my words so, here. No, it's fine. The the two player set has two full size war bands, the rules, tokens, dice, uh, measuring gauges, everything you need for two players to play the game. And then there are also faction sets, and those have essentially like a new war band and a new theme, and uh, and those are available also. And, and those are available on relicblade.com, so it's pretty easy to get a hold of. That was my next question. Yeah. You have a website, so that's yeah. good. So I can tell you're a, a board gamer yourself, so what would you say is your favorite board game of all times that you play? I, I play a lot of miniature wargaming, and um, my favorite game, gosh, like, I, I love them question. all. Like I'm, the thing is that I designed Relic Blade, and it's everything I want out of a game. So I really, it's my favorite game. But other than Relic Blade, you know, I really like Frostgrave. I really like Dystopian Wars. Um, I really like D and D. Gosh, I don't even know what to say. I'm sorry. <laughs> Put you on the spot. Yeah, yeah. So is this your first time at Adepticon? Uh, I attended last year to scout it out. I'm California based, so it's a little bit far for me to come and set up. But I think it's this is the place for me. Like mini wargaming is the main focus here, so no one that walks up needs to. I don't have to explain what a miniature is to anyone, so it's very fun to be here. Very yeah. familiar on our channel what miniatures are yeah, and good. how to play the game for sure. Good. So on your website, you can purchase these games. Do you ship internationally? Yeah. 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 Interesting. Do you have anything else you'd like to add to the game? No, I'm going to show some shots to the viewers of the yeah, miniatures. Cool. You've got a little tiny board set up here. I have uh, new releases coming out maybe next month. Uh, they are available here, but there's going to be. So the game is available presently and continuing to expand. So it, it stays active and exciting. What's and there's the also a campaign play also. I, I don't think I mentioned that. So you can do character advancement and, oh, and scenarios and adventures and all of that which I really like. I, I love a reason to play my next game, and so that, that's a big part of it. Um, what's the price for the core box? If uh, it's, a, it's a $100 box set, and that's enough for two players to have full warbands. Nice, mm -hmm. like the miniatures, I have to say, are really high quality. Um, I can see this game, uh, before I was talking to your, uh, the, the other gentleman here, uh -huh. and it, it's a small box, you can pretty much take it anywhere you want. Yeah. And does it take long to set up to play a game? No, uh, it's on a two by two board. And you know, when we were originally designing it and play testing it, I mean, we used just like books stacked to make hills and, and ruined castles in our imagination. So right out, right out, you can just throw down a space and set it up real easy. 
and play, a, play an awesome game. It's very exciting and dynamic in that quick half hour battle. <laughs> so, how long have you been in business, uh, Mini Wargaming? We've been in business 10 to 11 years. I feel deja vu right now. I know. I'm just, hey, I'm, I'm following notes here. <laughs> notes, see, I got notes. I got to ask you questions. All right. Okay, so what is your favorite board game? My favorite board game isn't Warhammer 40K. No, actually it is, but I, okay, fine. It's Warhammer 40,000. But I'm going to say my second favorite, because that's kind of a loaded question. My second favorite is called Koo. C-O-U-P is how you spell it, but I pronounce it coup because it's fun, whether it's right or wrong, I don't know. And it's a game where you lie to people and you kill them and assassinate them. What's your favorite army you like to play in 40K? Chaos Space Marines. <laughs> that was a hard question, wasn't it? Was it was a very hard question. You asked the hardest. I'm uh, really trying to This do my interview best. was very difficult. I usually have the questions flowing very easily, but with Dave, he's kind of a little intense right now, as if you can Am tell. Am I a little tense? I don't mean to be intense. So Dave could, per, could fit in with a board game maniac for sure, because Dave is a maniac like Are you me. calling me a board game maniac? Yeah, I am. Well, thank you. I've always wanted to be, and I will be forever, because you just called me one. I believe in the power of calling people things and making them the way that they are. It's so true. is there anything new on the horizon for Mini Wargaming that you can tell? Something that I'm personally working on right now is the Mini Wargaming Bunker, which is the mecca of awesome sauce creation because that is the factory where we pump it out and that's where people are going to come and stay and sleep overnight in themed rooms play in studios and in tournaments and participate in events and campaigns and escape rooms and buy stuff in the store and it's going to be awesome they're never going to want to leave that's what i'm doing right now for the next year about so one final question dave i know the answer but i have to ask this you is, have to do I you have, have to yes. are you being forced is there a gun to your head to someone for the like the viewers What's for the that? viewers. The question is... For the fjords? The viewers. For the viewers. That, that's what I said. My yeah. accent's really heavy, though, yeah. so I'll apologize if I don't say <laughs> words the same way. Where can uh, viewers go to find more information about Mini Wargaming? On YouTube, it's Mini Wargaming. Uh, on the web, it's miniwargaming.com. On Facebook, it's Mini Wargaming. On Instagram, it's Mini Wargaming. And just blow your nose with Mini Wargaming, and you'll find it. All right, well, thank you very much, Sarah Day, for this interview. And until next time, Board Game Maniacs. Inception. Be a maniac. What is your favorite board game? My favorite board game isn't Warhammer 40K. No, actually it is, but I... Okay, fine. It's Warhammer 40,000. But I'm going to say my second favorite, because that's kind of a loaded question. My second favorite is called Coup. C-O-U-P is how you spell it. But I pronounce it coup because it's fun, whether it's right or wrong, I don't know. And it's a game where you lie to people and you kill them and assassinate them. What's your favorite army you like to play in 40K? Chaos Space Marines. <laughs> that was a hard question, wasn't it? Was it was a very hard question. You asked the hardest. I'm really uh, trying to this do This interview best. was very difficult. I usually have the questions flowing very easily, but with Dave, he's kind of a little intense right now, as if you can Am tell. Am I a little tense? I don't mean to be intense. So Dave could... Per could fit in with a board game maniac for sure, because Dave is a maniac. Like Are you me. calling me a board game maniac? Yeah, I am. Well, thank you. I've always wanted to be, and I will be forever, because you just called me one. I believe in the power of calling people things and making them the way that they are. So, true. is there anything new on the horizon for Mini Wargaming that you can tell? Something that I'm personally working on right now is the Mini Wargaming Bunker, which is the mecca of awesome sauce creation because that is the factory where we pump it out and that's where people are going to come and stay and sleep overnight in themed rooms play in studios and in tournaments and participate in events and campaigns and escape rooms and buy stuff in the store and it's going to be awesome they're never going to want to leave that's what i'm doing right now for the next year about so one final question dave i know the answer but i have to ask this you have is, to do I you have, have to yes. are you being forced is there a gun to your head to someone for the like the viewers What's for the that? viewers. The question is... For the fjords? The viewers. For the viewers. That, that's what I said. My yeah. accent's really heavy, though, yeah. so I'll apologize if I don't say <laughs> words the same way. Where can uh, viewers go to find more information about Mini Wargaming? On YouTube, it's Mini Wargaming. Uh, on the web, it's miniwargaming.com. On Facebook, it's Mini Wargaming. On Instagram, it's Mini Wargaming. And just blow your nose with Mini Wargaming, and you'll find it.
All right, well, thank you very much there, Dave, for this interview. This is Leo from the game Conquest. So, Leo, do you want to talk us, talk us through a little bit about what your game is about? Yeah, perfect. So this is our take on a mass battle uh, fantasy war game. Uh, Game-wise, it's uh, regimental. So the gameplay, as you see right here, with the miniatures on their stands, so they come with the miniatures themselves. So the concept is that you play on a 4x4 four four table or on a 4x6, it scales up. So you start with nothing on the table, there's no deployment. Light warbands come in, they walk in the table, they contest objectives, they push up a line of scrimmage that heavier warbands can use to uh, come in from the sides from further on. That's one part. The other thing is that every warband comes in with a command card. Now that card you use at the beginning of the turn to arrange these cards in a stack. The card that's on top, you get to play first, activate that, take two actions, and then play passes on to your opponent. So you go back and forth like that. We want that because you don't bulk the, we don't bulk the game down in a very lengthy deployment phase or a very lengthy um, any sort of phase uh, overall. So you keep the game full of action, runs for about a couple hours. Uh, you can scale it up as far as you want to a, a larger table. And what you see right here is actually our star is set. Now the star is set includes what you see on the shelf with the exception of the Brute Jones and the Steel Legion. That is 80 hard plastic injection molded miniatures retailing for $80. So the, the core box is $80, you get all of this for only $80? $80, with the exception of the 12 Steel Legion and the uh, three Brute Jones, everything else is in there for $80, hard plastic sprues. That's a great deal. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's very good, it's very important for us to be able to have every aspect of development from the very conceptualization of the art to actually making it a sprue. Uh, we have financed the whole thing ourselves. There is no, crowd, there is no crowdfunding in this at all. So we, we, built the comp we built everything on our, pretty much from base up. And uh, what I understand is you didn't do any kind of Kickstarter camp or anything. It's just no. all funded. All us, all us. Well, that, that's, a, us. that's a big giant leap right there, doing yeah, it on your own. Definitely. And I'm going to show everybody, uh, Board Game Manic's going to show you all like the diorama that they have set up and some of the other creatures. It is a phenomenal looking game. It's a two player game. Yes, sir. And four by four, but again, mm -hmm. like Leo said, you can expand up yes, to sir. a four by six onto it. So do you have a website or anything that people can go to to check it out? Uh, yeah, actually the website is going to be up in a few, uh, in a month or so before our release. We released late summer, so at, at that point you'll be able to find, have all information so to get all the rules for free. We have our own army builders that you can start using. Uh, but uh, till then you can find us on Facebook and follow us on social media to see all the new art and all the new developments for the game. We have Mike here and he is from Firelock Games. Now, I just played a demo game of Blood and Plunder. It is a pirate game, which is incredibly awesome. The miniatures are cool. The mechanics worked phenomenal in the game. Like, I can't express how fun this was. It was only a short little demo, but it was well worth it. This gentleman right here is the creator right here. So hats off to you, sir, for such a great game. Thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh, it's incredible. So I just have a couple of questions for you. Sure. So I, I already know what it is, but I'll ask you now because your game is awesome. But what makes your company stand out amongst other tabletop companies? Okay, well, we're pretty different. Uh, we're doing historical pirate miniatures game, right? Typically, if you get historical, you're not really looking at things that are more a little bit more popular like pirates. And when you get pirates, it's typically more the uh, Jack Sparrow sort of uh, Hollywood thing. So we kind of hit, kind of hit multiple angles there. Um, one of the things that stands out the most or that makes it different from a lot of the other games that you're going to find here is that it's a completely amphibious game. You can play a game on land, you can play a game on sea, and you go in between. You can have guys come off your ships and go ashore, and it all uses the exact same sorts of rules. So you don't have to learn any real extra rules or anything. It's not like you're playing two different games. Although the tactical experience will feel like two different games sometimes, the rules don't change. So you just got to change the way you're thinking tactically, but not learn a whole other way to play a game. So it definitely changed your mindset for sure, because when you think of yeah. pirates, you think ships and out on the open sea, but right. they do go to land and they do fight on land too yep. as well. And that's the reason we chose to start their game out in the 17th century, which is the age of the buccaneers and filibusters, and they primarily raided ashore. So you've got like famous raids that you may have heard of, like Henry Morgan attacking Panama, right? That's the famous Captain Morgan. He assembled a, a force of of uh, like 3,000 pirates, the French, English, and Dutch pirates. And they all went and attacked Panama, burned it to the ground. It never got, it, to this day, it was rebuilt in a different location because of how much damage they caused. 
So it's a pretty fun, exciting time. How long did it take like in development? Because I know with historical games, you have to be pretty bang on the money with a lot of things. Yeah, we did a lot of, took a lot of time to get the research done and look through it all, but the whole process took about two years, start to finish of doing the research. We had the, um, we were able to do it probably a little faster thanks to uh, Benerson Little, who's, an, who's a pirate author and historian, and he was able to give us a lot of valuable information quickly, so instead of having a, you know, if I'm thinking about how would this work, I can instead of, uh, instead of trying to, you know, go search through a library of books, I can just kind of ask the source, ask the master himself, and he'd give us the information, and so was, that helped get the game not only accurate, but also also uh, much quicker to come around. So. So you had a pirate library at the touch of your fingers, That's pretty right. much. <laughs> Very awesome. Mm -hmm. So uh, another question too, as well, that I'm wondering about is: so, do you sell these on a website, or do you ship them into stores? How do you? How could anybody get a copy? Yeah, of we this? do both. We are. We should. You should be able to get Blood and Plunder through any of your friendly local game stores. We distribute through a lot of the big distributors, so that should be available. We also sell direct from our website at FireLockGames.com. So either of those ways is a good way to get all the stuff you need. Excellent. Um, can you explain to me roughly, like, there's a core box, I'm assuming, that you can get for the game? So we don't have a core box for, like, two players, like you get in a lot of games. Not yet. Working on it. Um, we're still pretty new of a game. We're trying to get that rolling. But right now what we have is uh, we have starter, like, army boxes, basically. It's a force box. And you pick a nationality, and it comes with 25 models, which is enough to play a 100-point game on land. You can add a ship to that. We have bundles that we sell too that will include a ship and some cards. But really what you need is a box of minis and the rule book and you can get started. We have way, way up there, none other than... Ego Queen Alexis. How are you guys doing? So you probably recognize her because she does have a YouTube channel. What's your YouTube channel name? Ego Queen Alexis. Oh, that's right. Very easy to remember. That's yes, right. Yes, it is. So what is, uh, what is your YouTube channel about? So I do everything on mini work, well, everything for this game itself, like any type of, I do building, painting, uh, battle reports, rants, podcasts, uh, Adeptus Podcast, as some of you may have heard of it. I'm a voice actress for TTS, and I'm a voice actress in general. And my most notable feat is I can glue a miniature to every single part of my hand. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, I also do cosplay. I, I was going to say just, that. Just a little bit. So, what are you dressed as now? This is Ego, the Demon of Pride, Slanesh Demon Princess. And you made all of this yourself? Yes, I did. So, how long did it take you to construct this? I, I, nope, um, nope, I don't even want to think about that. <laughs> like, well over a year in construction and it's still not done. Wow. Like, I haven't even done the speakers or the highlights or the LEDs or the other hand. I don't have my sword with me today, but it is what it is. How tall do you stand when you are wearing this costume? Um, it ranges anywhere from seven foot six to like seven foot ten. So yeah, pretty tall. Like I'm standing, and like I'm not really I... short, but she's yeah, she's pretty up there. <laughs> so I assume this is your passion. One of them. One of your passions. Yep. So I see it's mostly primarily made out of uh, foam, EVA, EVA foam? EVA foam, the whole thing. Do you want to explain just roughly the process of what, what you went through to connect the uh, foam pieces together? Um, it's kind of just held together by warp magic at this point. Warp a magic? A lot of duct tape. A lot of duct tapes, a lot of clips. I have a lot of clips underneath the armor. Um, my shirt is actually tied to this so it doesn't rip my pants down. <laughs> I'd be the true Marcus Lanesh, but... No, I'm not going to do that. So aside from this, co uh, this uh, costume, do you have any other ones that you made? Yes, yesterday and tomorrow I'm going to be walking around in my Sororitas cosplay. So I have, a, I have an Adeptus Sororitas, I have an Inquisitor cosplay, I have a bunch of others. How long have you been doing this for? Uh, well over six years. Wow. Okay, I won't keep you too long because uh, you're wanting to go out and probably kill some people but yeah, with flowers these, and skulls there's these pesky things called loyalists that need to uh find the true path find so, the way of the perfect god one other question for you is if anybody wanted to get into creating this sort of stuff what kind of uh 
guidance could you give them? Just simple guidance. What could you tell them? I'm just going to circle around. Um, if they while actually you're just sent me a message on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, I would more than likely just, well, give them the files that I used. And that's really it. It's just file work, duct tape, uh, making stencils of your own body, and foam. Lots and lots and lots of foam. Oh, and painter stilts underneath this, which uh, the finger fell off. If you can repair that really Oh, quickly. yes, I see there's oh, yeah. something and there. And always bring a repair person with you. <laughs> yes, you can see here, this gentleman right here is a repair person. <laughs> yep. All right, well, thank you very much for the interview. Uh, I will let you go and uh, wreak havoc. Yeah. And we have Corey here, and he is from Utter Board Games. I said that right. That is correct. Okay. So I, I seen this yesterday, Corey. I was walking around, sure. and the sign and the bright colors and just your miniatures and everything, it just caught my attention instantaneously. So I had to come and talk to you and find out what this game is all about. So do you want to explain to me about what the game Battle Scars is about? Sure. So it's a, a little bit lighter skirmish game. Um, and uh, basically, you're going to pick your team. Um, there's no factions. And so you have manufacturers. So think of like modern day, like Ford, Chevy, Toyota. You're going out and uh, going shopping as a mercenary, picking what kind of vehicles you want um, and to build out your, your team. And uh, it's a hex-based miniatures game and plays in about an hour and a half, so it's a little bit faster pace, although if you want to expand it, uh, the rules are designed to uh, grow into more of, from a skirmish to almost a war size uh, game if you need to. Um, there's a couple uh, really unique aspects about the game, um, and one of them is that you've got modular components, so you can actually switch out the different towers and weapon systems on your vehicle, not only at start, but also during the game, uh, you're able to change out your uh, configurations, your tactics, that kind of thing as the game kind of evolves. So it means that a lot of times what the game starts off with is usually long range defensive, turns into an all, all route brawl where you're doing low, uh, close range, medium range attacks, uh, trying to counter each other's play, and so it keeps it more dynamic. Um, so. They, they, so when you're saying you can switch out your weapons, because I seen the uh, miniatures yesterday where they're magnetized, you just take the weapon, you put the other weapon on. So the replayability of this is like, you can't imagine because you can always change your tactics during the game. Right. So that's that just blows my mind right there because, you know, somebody who, oh, I'm going to try this tactic, oh, it's not working for me, so I'm going to go to this one. As in other games, board games that when you play, you have a plan. You're just sticking to it. You can't right. do anything else with it. This one, it's so customizable, which is incredible. Yeah, so what happens is some of the bigger units that are made more for that con reconfiguration, um, they come with a certain number of, of what we call cargo. And so like one of the bigger units, uh, it comes with 10 cards, cargo cards. And so it uses three, and then you have seven you can choose from out of the, the collection. There's a ton of them. And those are readily available all throughout the game. And you know, yeah, what you come up with is pretty crazy. Is this primarily a two-player game? Um, actually, we designed it so that uh, you can go two all the way up to four out of the box. Um, you can do team-based. You can do four, you know, free-for-all, um, and then you can also just do the, like you said, the two, you know, one v one. So excellent. What's the rough size of the uh, gaming surface to play on? So the gaming size, um, I think we figured it out. It's, it's a it's a cutout hex board, so that you can actually modularly build them. Um, but it's roughly uh, three feet by two and a half feet is kind of what you're going to see roughly. Uh, but on a bigger scale game, you can certainly make it larger if you want to. I, I like the uh, the modularity of to it, where you can change it around. So again, it gives more of a different dimension that you're not always playing on the same uh, playing surface. Right, and then on top of that. Um, we actually have 10 different game modes as well as game modifiers. So at first, when you're getting used to the game, you'll probably do deathmatch. Um, but after that, you start rolling a D10 and there's all kinds of game modes from uh, racing to capture the flag to escort um, and other types of modes that are in there, as well as modifiers that might uh, increase or decrease resources. Um, Maybe you have to choose a, uh, one of the manufacturers to kind of focus on or something like that. And so the game is designed so that when you, if you want to, every time you play, not only is your configuration different, but the play style is also 
uh, randomizing and changing too. This is a very important question I have to ask you now. Sure. Where can the viewers get this game? <laughs> Well, we're, uh, we're getting ready right now, uh, the final quotes together uh, for our Kickstarter. So we'll be Kickstarting right now, we're looking at probably June, July. Um, and uh, so until then, you can kind of follow us on Facebook and also on our website, just learning more about the game and everything. Um, but we're trying to get everything ready for production. So we're investing all our time and money to make sure the game is solid. And then we're looking for Kickstarter to help us uh, take care of the manufacturing costs and get it out to people who want to play it. So what is your website that people can go to? So you can go to Utter Board Games, and then on there there's a link to Battle Scars. As well as on Facebook, you can either look up Utter Board Games or you can look up Battle Scars. Both of them are out there. I am at the booth for Breaker Press, and as you can see before you, well, behind this gentleman right here, it's Broken Contract. So. This game, I just played a demo and it is a lot of fun, I have to say. The minis look great, the mechanics into it work really, really good too as well. And we have none other than the creator right here. Hi, I'm Nick. So, Nick, do you want to tell me a little bit about uh, Broken Contract? Okay, Broken Contract is a uh, miniature war game, obviously. I'm set in a dystopian future. Nothing's big surprise there. Um, but in this dystopian future, all workers are indentured servants working for the corporations and in Broken Contract you can play as either miners or the Black Squadron security trying to keep the miners suppressed. So the miners, called Breakers, are all insurrectionists, or many of them are insurrectionists, trying to get out of the mines and live a life free or die trying. Um, and so that's kind of the idea. It's a micro skirmish game. Uh, you use uh, four to six models per side in an average game. And the idea is um, uh, it is meant to emulate an action movie experience. So you have action points and, inter and you can uh, use those for interruptions as well. Um, and uh, it's a constant game where uh, you're able to interact with one another. Excellent. Uh, where did you get the idea to make up, uh, to create this game? <laughs> Um, it's kind of kind of funny. I actually, uh, um, I don't know uh, uh, for your viewers if they've ever um, seen a game called Wreckage, um, made by Hyacinth Games, but I was working on that game, um, helping out with them, and uh, ended up deciding to go my own way. And I tore my ACL and had all this free time. And I was like, I'm going to create my own game. And um, I wrote like a... a basic, uh, um, you know, four paragraph thing on this, this setting idea that I had, and it just exploded from there. Um, the influences, things that I drew from were Firefly, Cool Hand Luke, um, Cowboy Bebop, and so those were kind of the, the influences that kind of uh, I drew off of. Excellent. Um, how long did it, you said roughly like two years in development, is that what you... Yeah, it was about two years. And you ran a Kickstarter on the... I've, I've run two Kickstarters so far and have a third one coming up. So right now, the, with the core box, can you tell me what you get in the core box? Yeah. Hand me one. Uh, down there. <laughs> Thank you. So this is the uh, uh, Broken Contract uh, core box. Um, it's a starter set that comes with eight models. It comes with um, all of the rules to the game, as well as a uh, episode book. Um, episodes are... Uh, um, a series of, of um, scenarios that all link together. And so it comes with an episode book with uh, um, three linked scenarios. And then it has dice, um, cards, because the, the game uses a, uh, a dashboard similar to games like Zombicide and um, um, The Walking Dead, uh, All Out War. And so um, it comes with all the things that you need to get up and rolling. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Is there any plans in the future for coming out with uh, expansions for it? Absolutely. Like the uh, um, this book, um, the day to day, which is comes in the um, comes in the uh, starter set, um, was the first of um, what will hopefully be many kind of like D and D module uh, style uh, expansions that add a bunch of scenarios that are all linked together, um, and then we're working on a uh, campaign book that. Uh, kind of collates all of the information on the Ferrum Sky Mines. And then ultimately the goal is to work into other seasons where they get out of the mines and things expand from there. Excellent. So one last question, and it's a very important question, is yes. 
where can people go to purchase this game? All right, so currently you uh, uh, want to go to breakerpressgames.com, uh, and uh, that is where all of the uh, all of the information on the game, uh, links to the web store, and all that are. Excellent. Great. It's a great game, like I said, Board Game Maniacs. If you get a chance, go to the website, breakerpressgames.com, yep. and you can go and you can purchase it. You will not be let down in any way, shape, or form. Thank you very much for the interview, and remember one thing, though, and one thing very important, and that is be a maniac. Awesome. Thank be you. Be a maniac. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with Patrick. Now, Patrick is an attendee for uh, Adepticon 2018, as well as he was on Geek Nation's tours. Well, Geek Nation's tour, it, it takes you around and it gets you to go to all different places that is to do with board games and just gaming in general. So, Patrick, do you want to talk to me first off about your Geek Nation tours, what you've done so far, and, you know, like highlights? All right, so Geek Nation tours, which is awesome, by the way, Terrace Run's a great uh, show. Uh, it allows you to experience all of Adepticon or any geek tour that you want, they like you go into Japan and check out Gundam stuff like that. Uh, it's a great thing for geeks, by geeks, for geeks. What I'm doing here at Adepticon is I'm attending hobby seminars. There's also a lot of great gaming going on. If you like Flames of War, 40K board gaming, or role playing. Um, cool thing about Geek Nation tours is that you can get in and sign up for hobby seminars or any seminar you want a week before everyone else. So you are guaranteed to get that spot and those spots are hotly contested, believe me. So it's a fast pass for you, more or less, for the uh, yeah. seminars. And you get up, you get an upgrade to the um, very important gamer swag bag and there's a ton of stuff in there. Word to the wise, if you're going to sign up for that, bring an extra bag. There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, so one thing I want to ask you there. so. Yesterday you come up to me because you're a, a board game enthusiast yourself. You love playing board games. Pretty cool stuff, yeah. So you come up to me, and what did you what did you ask me and do for Board Game Maniacs, Maniac Rob? Like this is an incredible, like this is an incredible person right here. So please just explain to the folks what you did. So as part of the swag bag, I got this cool game by uh, Gale Force Nine called Star Trek Ascendancy. It's a cool, it's a great game where you get to play as either the Federation, Klingons, or the Romulans, and you get to try and take over the Star Trek universe. All the planets that are there as you, as you go through the campaign are all from Star Trek, all the years of Star Trek from the original series up to now. So if you're a Star Trek geek, you're going to be having a lot of fun playing that game. Plus there's expansions for it for the Ferengi, for the Cardassians, for the Borg, and there's also going to be some other factions coming up pretty soon for it as well. So stay tuned and uh, be geeky. So uh, what I did though is I, with my copy of Star Trek Ascendancy, which I got as part of the swag bag, I donated it to Rob and the rest of you board game maniacs so that you guys can play it, enjoy it, and find out how fascinating it all is. That's right. So. Hats off to you, sir, for doing this. That's an incredible uh, gesture that you did. Board Game Annex will definitely put it to use. And when we play the Thank game, you. we're definitely going to be giving you a shout out because this is incredible. Nobody's ever done this for Maniac Rob or the other Board Game Annex before. So, again, thank you very much. You know, I have one very serious question for you, though. And that is what is your favorite board game that you play? Oh, wow. I have played uh, several. Um... You know what, if you, if you don't mind sort of a longer board game, Feast of Odin is a great game. Uh, and so is, well, I mean, they're all great. But, um, crud, what was the other, what was the other one? There's so many to choose from. I know. It's, you know, there's so many games out there, and they're all great. Uh, you can tell that... Uh, he is definitely a, a board game fanatic because, or mm -hmm. maniac actually. Yeah. Because usually with maniacs, when board game maniacs, you ask them, what game is your favorite? It's very hard to come up with one because it you play is. so much. You are very passionate about all the board games. Yep. So on that note, we will leave you go so because you can go to your seminars. But again, thank you very much, Patrick. Give me a handshake there. Uh, board Game Annex, thank you too as well. And you, I will definitely let you know when this comes up online. Have okay. fun with the Geek Nations tours and also the seminars. And just one more thing you got to remember. 
one very important thing. And that important thing is, mm -hmm. be a maniac. <laughs> so I'm at the Cool Mini or Not booth, and as you can see behind this gentleman here, there's lots of games going on here. And as everybody knows, the Board Game Maniacs, we love Cool Mini or Not games. So I have Mike here. So Mike, just a couple of questions. Um, off camera, we talked about the famous Rising Sun that has just been released. What are your thoughts on the Rising Sun? As a person who has just experienced this for the first time recently, <laughs> I am pleasantly surprised by the way the game plays. Uh, normally, I'm a run and gun type of board gamer, hack and slash, but I found that the the play style of Rising Sun was it was fast, it was in, intuitive, and it kind of reminded me of a game of poker, if you will, because you're, you're actually playing against the other opponents, and some have become your allies, and some become your enemies, but it flows like water, so it changes in and out, and it creates a, a interesting dynamic that I found very pleasurable. Awesome. Um, besides the Rising Sun, have you played any of the other uh, new games that have been released recently, like maybe like Rise of Moloch or Zombicide Green Horde that was just also released? Well, yes, just recently at PAX, we actually did a play demo of the Green Horde box set, which is soon to be released for retail and to our backers. Part one of the backers, uh, part one of the retail release was released to our backers earlier this a couple months ago, and now coming in the coming months, the rest of the Kickstarter will be coming out to the rest of our backers. But as a play, as the playthrough went through, I found that it adds to the Black Play uh, game system very seamlessly. Uh, I found that the inter the introduction of the zombies, the orcs, the goblins, the dragons, the trebuchet, and the ballista as a increasing refreshing new aspect of the gameplay. So speaking about the Zombicide, uh, the Green Horde, what are your thoughts on the hedges mechanic? Now, we played a game because I'm one of the Kickstarter backers mm -hmm. and I played mm -hmm. it, and that, I guess, out of all of the extra additives into the Zombicide uh, Green Horde, besides the Horde being my favorite and the trebuchet, uh, again, it was the hedges that really kind of added that extra little bit of, you know, difficulty, I should well, say. Yeah, yeah, it, it's again, it's one of those surprise mechanics that either can help you or it can hurt you. So I think that players will find that the, it's the little things that either swing the tide in your favor or against your favor. But those mechanics and those, uh, how do you call it, those variables, what makes it very for, uh, makes for a very, very interesting time. Great. I won't keep you too much longer, Mike, because I know you're busy here. The booth is definitely yes. packed. Yes. Uh, it's always packed every time I walk, walk by here. Yes. There's so many people. Mm -hmm. uh, just another question. This is a really serious question. All right. I can tell you're a board gamer. Mm -hmm. And I think you are a maniac board gamer. <laughs> so just one question. Out of all the board games that you ever played, mm -hmm. what would you say is your favorite? Wow, that is an interesting question because I have quite a collection of games. So. I want to say out of all the board games that I have, I want to say Massive Darkness has to be one of my favorite games, both in its design element and the way that it kind of levels you up as you go along, but it's not overbearing. It's simplistic enough to be fun, but complex enough to get a, a variety of enjoyment out of the system. That's a great answer, and you know what, I, I think I, I'm pretty close to agreeing with you on that one. <laughs> it's a good time, I mean, and, and the fact that you have a crossover pack that goes seamlessly with Zombicide Black Play, it just increases the variety and the challenge. Awesome, well thank you very much Mike. Again, we're at Cool Mini or Not, and we are interviewed Mike for all the different games, and as everybody tells from watching Board Game Maniacs, we love Cool Mini or Not. Thank you. They're thank part you. of the family. Who we have here is Bill from Foot Sore Miniatures. Hi, everyone. Uh, Bill has just told me a couple of things about a new game that's coming out. So, Bill, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, this is a new game that we've produced uh, in conjunction with War Banner. Um, it's called Gangs of Rome. It's set in um, the early part of the first century. Um, and it's set in Rome, in the back streets of Rome, where uh, gangs would vie for power uh, between different houses. Um, it's a very interactive game, the streets aren't empty like you would assume in most games. There's actually mobs of figures that interact with the fighters, so they can be a hindrance or a help depending on what happens. Your fighters can blend into the crowd and disappear and then appear in another part of the, the board game, uh, the, the um, field uh, of play. 
Um, so you've got a lot of kind of small nuances. Every fight is fairly individual. Uh, they, they come as models with different heads, different weapons. Uh, and your job is, is to create a gang that can elevate your dominus, who's like your house leader. Uh, and you fight for control of the Aventine that way. This game now, it, it's played onto a table surface. So I'm talking about like the size and about the streets it's, and so it's, forth. Yeah, it's, a, it's just a three by three table. Uh, you don't need a lot of space at all. It's a kind of kitchen table game. Um, we have buildings provided to, um, by Sarissa um, Precision. Uh, they do probably about 30 odd buildings now for Rome. Uh, they've got a, a huge variety out there. They've even got a, a kind of Colosseum kind of building. They have construction sites. They've got different shops and warehouses. Uh, they did a fantastic job. And building them is a really easy thing. So you can have a, a whole you know, street scene for Rome built in a very short amount of time. How new is this game? Uh, this game's been out um, only a couple of months now. Um, it's really just done the, the start of uh, releasing it. We've just had our first in fact, not this month. Uh, yeah, sorry, we're at the end of the month, aren't we now? So we're just about to have the first releases of special characters, uh, which is a healer and a butcher. Um, so we'll be releasing steadily different characters that you can introduce into the game. Also, scenarios are going to be coming out uh, where you can interact with different building types. Um, there's a whole host of things that are planned for it. For somebody who is just starting to get into this game, what would what would you need to start the game like miniature wise size uh, if the core box we we do um, to, uh, this weekend for Adeptico we're doing a starter set uh, and in that starter set you've got six different fighters and you've got three mob bases with five figures on each one uh, we're also throwing in a free uh, Roman Mastiff which is this great big hound um, and you get three sets of buildings uh, one's a construction site and the others are um, different types of shops. Uh, and that's basically all you need to play. Uh, the rule book comes with it, and you can simply play from that. And if anybody wants to buy this, which I'm sure our viewers, Board Game Anex, mm -hmm. is going to be definitely interested in, where can you go to pick this up? Uh, you can go straight to the Footsore um, website to pick it up, or the Gangs of Rome website, uh, either either. Um, they can order it directly online. There's a number of different packages there that they can order, depending on what they want to spend. Um, so everything's there, yeah, online. And what's the website? The website is uh, footsoreminiatures.com. Footsoreminiatures.com. Great, it looks like very interesting, and I like the, the mob mechanic, like you said, that mm. they can watch, they can cheer, they can run away, or they can attack. Yeah. So it makes the game more dynamic to the point that you really don't know what's going to happen to your your no, fighter. No, and you can you can actually use the mobs in your favor. You can you can scare them. Uh, uh, some some fighters have the ability to scare a mob, and that means the mob will run away. You know, if one of your enemies is behind that mob, the mob will trample him. You know, so he'll suffer wounds from being trampled by this you know crowd of people kind of thing. So there's lots of little nuances that you can use uh, with the mobs. Very interesting. It sounds very fun. Yeah, so it is. A lot thank of fun. you again for the interview. And I'll let you get back because this, again, this is another booth that is always busy every time I walk by here. And I can see why you now because of the miniatures and the type of game it is and so forth. So hopefully you'll see this game on Board Game Maniacs. We'll play it. And if you like it, you can give a thumbs up. You can subscribe. And again, if you want to play it yourself, go to the website, footsoreminiatures.com. Mm -hmm. And you can check it out. You can check all the other games that they have to available. Because I'm sure you have more games than this one, but this game is phenomenal as this, itself. This is our, fir our first actual uh, whole game. Uh, but uh, we also support lots of other games like Saga's our you know, main game that we support. Uh, also other Dark Age games. Uh, but we've got other games planned for the future. So yeah, check it out. Uh, sign up to our Facebook page and you'll be kept informed of whatever's coming. I'm here with Edward and we are talking about the game Wild West, West Exodus. Now I came and I seen this yesterday and I'm not going to lie, I started drooling automatically. <laughs> everyone does, everyone does, everyone's having a good time here. So, can you explain to me uh, about the game, like the premise of the game, what era kind of takes place yeah. in? So we're looking at, uh, essentially, after the Civil War in America, it drifts out a bit with the RJ technology. Essentially, we're looking at a bunch of factions in America. You've got Warrior Nation, you've got Union, you've got Outlaws trying to fight against any of the Watchers that are trying to sort things out, then you've got, uh, what else we've got? 
I believe we've got uh, Hex, which are the bad guys, but not the bad guys. It's always a bit confusing. There's always all the factions have a double-sided coin. Sometimes they're the good guys, sometimes they're the bad guys. Depends on what side you're reading the story from. Uh, we've got other factions that play within those factions. So, for instance, you've got the Golden Army, which are like Conquistador-style army. It's my favourite. They're within the Outlaws. So that's one of the things we wanted to try and do is some armies will be able to play beside each other and not necessarily have to choose one of the factions, but rather you've got them as separate posses in your game. Awesome. So the game, now I, there's tons and tons of expansions that you can get for this game that I see yeah. so far. So anybody who want, is interested in starting this game, what would you recommend them starting off with? Well, the, the best way to start, obviously, is the Red Oak starter set. That is probably one of the best ones to get. It's got two factions. Most of the models can play for either faction. So, you know, if you want one of the two factions, it's a really good deal. Otherwise, you can just get one of the posse sets plus the, the Govins box, which has everything you need to play. We're going to be releasing more and more posse sets, which are your basic startup place for any, any posse set for the game. And essentially, you buy one, you buy the Govins, so you're good to go. Ideally, or what you want to do eventually in a game is have multiple posses playing beside each other. So acquiring any of them for the faction you like is not a bad idea because you can always buy the next one that comes out and play them side by side. Is there a amount like point wise that, that you start when you're playing the game? You start like maybe with uh, 850 points, I think everybody. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe that the posses is about 600, 650 points. It depends on each one. Uh, there's specific values for each one, obviously. Um, you will grow up to, I believe the, the, our tournament set starts at 500, so the Grow League, Slow Grow League starts at 500 and keeps pushing you up. There's really no limit, I believe our standard points is 1500. Again, it's your choice, if you've got a massive board, go crazy, 3000 points, why not? Yeah, now, again, this booth has been super busy for the entire time. Yeah. Uh, you're running demos here, you're, you're showing all the... Uh, it's some of the We've models that busy. are coming out. Yeah. So can you touch upon any of the miniatures that are going to be coming out for yeah, this well, game? Yeah, well, out, uh, well, we just, it was out for a couple of weeks ago. We've got the Brilliant Clade, which is uh, the new Watcher set. It's uh, the first posse set for the Watchers. Really good place to start. Plastic and resin. Uh, it's got loads of options in the box. And then we've got... I believe next month we're going to be seeing the Deadly, Deadly 7 and Wayward 8. Two great boxes, Everyone, everyone's been looking for them. We've just had the production plastics here, that's kind of my job. And we got them here, everyone's happy about them, everyone's chuffed to see them out and get people to play with them. Excellent. So one more question I promise Go I will leave you alone. You don't um, have to. <laughs> it's a very important question though. And the question is, anybody who wants to uh, start into this game and they're going to purchase the, the starter set and so forth. Now, I know you, you have local distributors around the yeah. world that you can buy it at, but is there a website that they can go to Yeah, as so well? they can go to whatwasexodus.com. That's where you can find all the, all the information, all the cards for all the characters. You can find the rule book as well. All, the, all that's for free on our website. You can see all the catalog as well. If there's certain models you want to find out where they, what's their, uh, what they look like. You can ask your retailer to get them from us. Uh, on our website, there's a store locator and there's a list of distributors for shops to get in touch with them. You know, on essentially our website is to try and get the hobby to the people, to the stores. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Edward. I will not keep any more of your valuable time. I won't tell no you anymore. Thank you very much for this and thanks for being part of this game because it is incredible. I played a demo yesterday and like I said, all I can do is just, I can't stop drooling because it's awesome. Thank you very much, and again, this is Depticon 2018, 